my screen because I'm going to toggle between the screens. Okay, so welcome to your session eight. It feels like it has been long. Um, and today we're going to start doing study unit six, which is continuous normal distribution. And in short, I'm always going to refer to study unit six as normal probabilities. Um, because we don't do all continuous distribution, we only doing one continuous distribution, which is the normal distribution. So in your module, even when you use your prescribed book and study, do not study everything else. We only do one normal distribution or normal probability distribution. That is the only section that you need to worry about. The other thing in terms of the normal distribution, because you're not doing pure stats, you are not going to worry about the probability density functions like we didn't do probability density functions. And I'm going to apologize since load shading started, my network has become unstable. So if you don't hear me, let me know um, so that then I don't lose anyone uh, or I don't just talk, talk to myself. Um, <clears throat> so um, we don't deal with probability density um, functions. So you don't cover that, don't even worry about that. If I don't mention it, it means it's not important to you or it's not important to your module that, that we are busy with. OK, so. Based on our session plan, um, you need to keep on watching the session plan so that you know when we have tutorials and when we do not have, especially the online sessions. So today is the is the 10th. We having this continuous normal distribution. Next weekend on Sunday, we are going to look at sampling distribution and remember we're working towards you being able to submit your assignment three and session 10 will be on the 24th of July and we will con we will concentrate on the two chapters, the continuous normal distribution and the sampling distribution and we'll do question and answer and answer more uh, more activities and do more exercises and so on. All right, and then you just need to follow this. I will also amend the calendar because I think people saw that I didn't change anything on the calendar um, when we do not have a, a session and then the session is already pre-scheduled because I just did an automatic um, a pre-booking of all the Sundays, not thinking of there will be Sundays that uh, we are not having any sessions, but I'm going to adjust the sessions online as well. OK, if you have any question or you can stop me right here and ask any question as well before we start with today's session. Um, if there are no questions, then uh, uh, to yes. Uh, yes, uh, I I read while going through uh, the notes of the uh, this week, I uh, came across. I, I was one. I came across the uh, a nominal probability table. Where can I uh, find uh, a, this table? Okay, I'm going to show you where to find the table. There are some books. They do have two tables. They do have a standardized normal distribution table. They also have a cumulative standardized normal distribution table. We do not use just the standardized normal distribution table. We use the cumulative one, and I'm going to show you during the course of the session today how to use that table because that is the table we're going to be using from now on until you go write the exam when we do um, confidence intervals or even when we do in the next session in, in study unit seven uh, sampling distribution we're still going to be using the same table when we do confidence intervals we're still going to be using the same table when we do um, hypothesis testing is still going to be using the same table. So, but I'm going to show you how to read it and which table we are using. Okay, don't worry. Okay, so in order for you to be able to do this chapter or this study unit properly, you need to have your statistical table, 
you need to know your formulas. The formula here, it's easy. It's the simplest formula that we're going to be using. And you need a calculator to do that. By the end of the session today, and that is what I also thought, because I, I forgot to publish the um, study unit earlier for you to also refer to it and go through the content before we do the discussion today. I went back and I revised the whole chapter. So today we're just going to do the whole chapter, the whole study unit um, in, a, in this one hour, 30 minutes that we have. But in a nutshell, uh, by the end of the session today, you should be able to learn how to um, apply the basic concept, concept of normal distribution. You should be able to calculate the normal distribution probabilities by looking at the table, finding the probability of a Z less than, finding the probability of Z greater than A number, finding the probability that Z lies between two numbers, or finding the probability or any values using the empirical rules or not using the empirical rules, depending on what you need to be finding in terms of normal distribution. And I guess you did lose me right there. Uh, just give me a second. I need to check if I can connect via my phone because my Wi-Fi is having these difficulties. I must just apologize for that. Just give me a second. Uh, do you still see the presentation? Probably I should just stop and re share again. Apologizing for that. Let's see. Okay. Okay, like I said, um, we should uh, be able to do all of this by the end of today's session. Okay, so what is a continuous probability distribution? Um, it comes from a continuous random variable. So a process that comes from a continuous um, variable, those are the, um, the variables or it's a process where it is um, measured. Right, because we know that a, a variable type that is continuous or quantitative continuous, it's that variable that is measured. Um, we can assume that any value on a conti uh, continuum uh, takes up that continuous variable. For example, the thickness of an item, if you take a measuring tape and measure the thickness of a nail or a a bottle or something. Uh, the time required to complete the task, you need to have a clock to time or, or, or check the time or record the time. The temperature of a solution, you need the thermometer to test the temperature of that solution. If it was boiling, you will need a thermometer to be able to measure the temperature. You can't put a finger or you can watch it and say the temperature is this much, so you need an instrument to do that. The height, you need a measuring tape also to measure the height, either in inches or in square meters or in whatever the, uh, the units, the measurement unit you are using. 
Okay, and this can potentially take any value depending only on the ability to precisely and accurately measure that variable. And this are just your continuous random variables. And when you have those variables or when you have measured, um, for example, the thickness of the, um, the nail, you measure each and every nail that you have, let's say the population nail for that factory when they pro produce, the nails, they're about 3,000. You measure the 3,000 nails that they have produced and you can take the, um, you can draw a histogram of the measurement of those thickness of the, the, the width of the nail and it can be displayed on a histogram and the pattern of that might follow a normal distribution and a normal distribution is something that looks like this where you might find that um, depending on the the value of your mean or your standard deviation we we know what the mean is is the measure of central location it measures how where are your data uh, the, it describes the location of your data and we know what a standard deviation is, is the measure of your variability or dispersion or how far apart your data is from the mean, right? So when you look at the distribution of your data uh, or the thickness of that nail and you can see if it follows any of the patterns, it can be uh, uh, the mean um, of that might be at the central point and then the standard deviation might tell you whether you get a top like um, a top peak like the yellow one or a normal distribution sort of pattern or a flat one so this if i draw the mean let me just do it that way if i say this is the mean of this one the mean is at this point you can see that the distance between that mean and the standard deviation is smaller. So that might be a one standard deviation from the mean and it creates that peak. And this might be a two standard deviation away from the mean for the blue one. And we can see that that it looks like a normal, a, a, a median normal distribution curve. And with this one, I can draw the mean here. But if you look at the distance between the mean and the outside of the calf, you can see that this is a big distribution uh, where the, the gap between the mean and the standard deviation are very huge and it creates a flat, um, a, a flat uh, normal distribution calf. But if we also look at the difference between um, the uh, differing the means, you can see that the the pinkish color, the mean is more than the mean of the blue and the yellow one because the blue and the yellow ones, they've got the same mean, um, except the, 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 the pink one has a different mean. So when you vary the mean, your graph will either move from left to right. Uh, we'll discuss this later on. It will move, it will shift from left to right based on the, the mean and your standard deviation will shift your graph up and down in terms of whether it becomes narrower, taller, shorter, and normal. Um, so, like I just mentioned, when we change the value of our means, the normal distribution curve will move from left to right, and when we change by increasing the value of your standard deviation, like you saw, the flat the the curve will either flattens or it will become narrower and sh and taller uh, by just looking at the spread of the values. Um, so when we talk about normal distribution as well, because we do collect the actual data, which is your observed data, that when you go and and you start measuring something. That is the actual data and sometimes your data might not be normally distributed. Like I showed you with the CAF, it can look like this to say it's normally distributed. Sometimes it's not. In that case, when the data is not normally distributed, then we need to standardize the data. By standardizing the data, we say we mean 
any normal distribution with the mean and the standard deviation combination can be transformed into a standardized normal distribution by applying the Z, which is also called a standardized normal distribution. I know that earlier when we started looking at measures of central locations and measures of um, variation, we did touch on some Z scores when we were talking about outliers and all that. But in a nutshell, in your module, the outliers, we do not always refer to the Z scores when we calculate in them and all that. We don't refer to those ones, but those who are doing pure math or pure statistics, um, usually they do have to understand and interpret what the Z score is and how they calculate or find their outliers. In your module, we use the Z score usually for only standardizing the, norm, the, the distribution so that it becomes normally distributed. And that is where we only use the Z score. So in order for us to standardize, we need to transform our X observations into the Z units. And to standardize the normal distribution, it will have the mean of zero. It doesn't mean that when I'm saying it has the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one, it means everything that you need to be working on in this module will have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Remember, any, any object will have or any population that you would have selected or you are using or the sample that you are using will have a mean related to that. But that mean might be from a sample or a population that is not normally distributed. Therefore, when we standardize it, we then say it has the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one, right? That is when it is standardized. What is a normal distribution and how do we identify it? It is what we call a barely curved shape. So you will see that it looks like this, the graph on our right, it's a belly calf. When a pregnant woman is pregnant, you, they have a, this belly, so that it looks like that. Um, and sometimes we refer to it as a symmetrical distribution or the data is symmetrical. And we know when it is symmetrical in terms of measures of central location, we say the mean and the median are equal. So it means the mean and the median are on the same point. Um, and the location or the locality of the data, which is your central location of the data, is determined by the mean and the spread for the dispersion is determined by the standard deviation. We use those two values, um, the mean and the standard deviation. And any value, because there can be any value of x, you can see that x can be from negative infinity to positive infinity. So any random variable can be lying on any of the x axis, anyway on the x axis, whether on the negative infinities or on the positive infinities. Um, it, it can be lying between those values there. So when we talk about infinity, we're talking about the number that we don't know how much it is. It is in the in in the biggest, biggest, or the smallest, smallest, smallest number that we don't know what that number is. It is infinite and infinite. Okay. But what you need to also realize is that usually in your module, because they cannot ask you to find an infinite um, mean or standard deviation or sample from an infinite thing, um, we always are told what the population is or we are told what the population parameters looks like and then we can make assumptions from there as well. So how do we how do we standardize the data? We do this by uh, using the Z score. So our Z formula, which is also called the Z score, it's also called the Z distribution. So it doesn't matter which word you use but we can call it the Z score or we can call it the Z distribution or the Z. 
And you will see when we go to the table, I'm always going to say go to the Z table, Z table. So we're going to be using the Z, Z, Z table or the Z distribution table. So the Z is your observation X minus the population mean divided by the standard deviation. And that is how you standardize your X values. And we know that this formula or this Z distribution is always standardized by the with the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. So we're not going to put here zero and put here one. No, 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 that's not what we mean. But this whole formula is standardized with the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. What do we mean? So in the middle, on your Z, remember now I've transformed my X value. So this is my Y and this is was this is where my X was. My X value, I've transformed it into a Z. Then my mean will be zero and my standard deviation will always be one standard deviation away from the mean. Uh, and that will be where my standard deviation, they, oh, sorry, that will be my Z distribution in a nutshell. It will look like this. That is a normal standardized distribution. Now, on the left of the mean, so we know that this is the mean. On the left of the mean, there will be some negative, negative values. So this side, we know that there are negative values. And on the right, which is going that way, there will be, positive values of Z. So it means also on the table that we're going to be using, we're going to have negative values and positive values. So remember this when we get to the table as well. Let's look at an example of how do we standardize the X values. If X is distributed normally with the mean of 100 and the standard deviation of 50, the Z value of X is equal to 200 is given by. So we told what the mean is. So we know that is our mu, our standard deviation. We know that is our sigma. And the Z value, they told us what X is, is 200. We just go to our Z score um, formula and substitute. X is 200. The mean is 100. The standard deviation is 50 and we calculate 200 minus 100 is 100 divided by 50 is 2. Now, I'm going to ask you later on, when we go to the table, we need to leave it into two decibels. So you're going to just add another zero there. It's very, very, very important to remember that. Right. So the answer there will be 2.0. You are not allowed or you are not expected to interpret the Z score. Good people, there is no way in your module they're going to examine you of interpreting what the Z score means. No, they are not. But there will be some theory questions that they will ask you about the normal distribution. All those things that we spoke about, you will be examined on, but not the interpretation. So if the in case, because I, I will never know your lecturers sometimes surprises me in case they ask you to interpret the Z score, then you will say with the X of 200, it means your Z, your X of 200, it is two standard deviation because the answer there was two. It is two standard deviation away from the mean or, or above from the mean because it's positive. It was negative, you will say, below the mean. So it's two standard deviation above the mean because it is above because it's positive. If the answer here was negative mine, negative 2.0, then you will say below, below the mean of 100 which is the same as two increments of the 50 rand per each um, 50 rand that you have. Okay, that is only if you are expected to interpret the Z score. Other than that, I've never seen any way in the past exam papers or in the um, assignment questions where they ask students to interpret the Z score. Um, this is done when you're doing pure states. Okay. 
So let's see if you remember everything that I just said in two seconds ago, five minutes ago. Which one of the following statement is incorrect with regards to normal distribution? So this one is one of those theory questions that they can ask. Therefore, it means you need to know your normal distribution property, the basic concept of normal distributions. Everything that we just learned. Okay, so number one, remember we're looking for the incorrect statement. Number one says the z-score of the mean of normal distribution is one. What do we know about the mean of the z-score? We know what? What do we know? Go back here. What do we know about the mean? It's distributed with the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. Of one, yeah. Yes. So they said the mean, so then they said one. So this should have been zero. So it means which one of the following statement would have said that one is incorrect, right? The smaller the value of your standard deviation, the narrower and the steeper the curve. That is this question that we just dealt with. So let's assume that this is 0 0.5 standard deviation and this is 1 and this is 2.5. So the question was, the smaller the standard deviation, the narrower or the steeper the curve is. That is true, right? Because if this is smaller than one, you can see that the curve, the yellow one, has the smaller standard deviation. So that would have been correct. The mean of the normal distribution can be any numerical value in the negative or positive or zero somewhere there. And that is this. The mean can be either in the negative or in the positive, right? Or it can also be zero because we know the standardized normal distribution has the mean of zero. So that one is correct. Right. Uh, the area to the right of the mean of standard deviation is 0 0.5 and the area to the right of the mean of the standard div normal distribution is 0 0.5. What didn't I tell you now is the area. Now, going back to the graph, now I can just explain this. If you look at this graph, I'm just going to remove all this. The area underneath the curve, so everything underneath this curve, yeah, all these values, we call it the area. The area underneath the curve, this is your probability values. Those are your probability values. All this, the area underneath the curve is your probability values. Now, if this is the probability value, Therefore, it means the sum of all the probabilities will be equals to one. If I split this graph into half, because it says if I split it right in the middle of the mean of zero, where it is, it tells me this will be 0 0.5. This will be the probabilities on the right of the mean will be 0 0.5 because if I add both of them, they will give me one. The sum of all these probabilities underneath the curve will give me one. So that is what the question was asking you. So if you get something like this asked, you just need to know how to visualize it and explain it. So the area to the right of the mean of a normal distribution, if this is my mean, the area to the right will be this side to the right, and the area to the left will be this one. And we know that this is negative and this is positive, the area there, and we have the mean of zero in the middle. But the probabilities which are there, the probabilities underneath or the area underneath the curve, 
The other thing you need to be aware of in terms of the area underneath the calf, that's the other thing that I didn't mention. You will notice that your values of your area underneath the calf, so this belly calf, will never touch the X axis anywhere. It will always be closer to the X axis, but it will never touch. So there's always some little bit of an area or a gap between the axis and the, and the belly calf. So they never touch. Now, this is something that we also have studied before, but before we introduce the normal distribution, we dealt with empirical rule. Remember that? And I think they introduced the empirical rule with your... We introduced the empirical rule when we were doing uh, measures of central locations and measures, measures of dispersion. Now, from what you remember with the empirical rule, remember there are three areas. There is the mean in the middle and there is area number one, area number two, and the last area. So we know that it's one standard deviation, two standard deviation, and three standard deviation. So what we know about one standard deviation, there are 68%. Two standard deviation, there are 95%. Three standard deviation, there are 98% or 99%. I can't even remember now, but there are 98%. Um, three standard deviations, so two standard or oh, one standard deviation. So I'm just gonna put it there. One standard deviation, two standard deviation, and three standard deviation. So the question here was asking you if 95% of the values of normal distribution are within two standard devi deviation of the mean. We know that 95% are two standard deviation away from the mean, and that's how you answer the questions. So it's as straightforward and easy as that. Okay, so now let's go back and look at how do we then use this information to find the probabilities because we haven't found the probabilities. Now we're going to start working. Okay. Finding the probabilities, we find them in three ways. Remember, we can find the probability of a less than, or we can find the probability of a greater than, we can find the probability that it lies between. So let's first start with the probability of less than. So when we find the probability, like I've already explained, the probabilities are the area underneath the curve. Right? The area underneath the curve. A we call it AUC. It's the same as the probability, and it is what we're going to be finding. So, to find the probability, we're going to use the table, the cumulative standardized normal distribution table. Okay. We're going to use Cumulative, it's table E2. If you have past exam papers or any way they have it, and it is called the cumulative standardized normal distribution. And you can see also they've got a picture there and it shows you certain things. Now, this table, this cumulative standardized normal distribution table, we're going to get to it just now. So if you have a question asking you to find the probability of Z less than a value, what is a Z? A Z, you would have already calculated your Z by using the standardized formula. Remember, the Z distribution, you would have calculated that to find the value of A. So this value of A, you find it, it's the same as that. So this value of A, it's your X minus the means divided by the standard deviation. You're going to find a value there and your value will be in two decimals. So if it was 2.00, if, if the answer was 2.0, you just add a zero to it. And I'm going to show you or tell you just now. So how are we going to use the table? The 
table has the positive and the negative, like we said it before. You need to remember that this table contains only, like I said, only the less than values. The two tables that you have in front of you, if you have them, or these two tables that you're going to see, they only contains data or probabilities of the less than. Only less than, less than, less than. Anything, if the question is find the probability that it's X is this and Y is this and da, 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 the mean is this, the standard deviation is this, find the probability that X is greater than. You won't find it here, but you will do certain things but if they say find the probability that x is less than then the value you see on this table inside the table these are your probabilities all these values are your probabilities all these values you see here are your probabilities you come here you find it and that will be your probability of a less than let's go to the actual table i like doing demo on the actual tables so Finding the probability of, let's say the question, first find the probability that Z is less than 1.25, right? That is in two decimals. Now, practicality means we practice. So let's practice that. We can see that, that we have 1.2 and then we've got the 5, right? 1.2. The 1.2, you always going to find it on this side of the table, on your left side. So the first values will be on the left side. The last value will be 0 0.05, and this will be at the top. So the last value will always be the last value of the value at the top of the table, which is this top of the table, right? Like I said, I have 1.25. This is a positive value. This table has negative values of Z and positive values of Z. You can see there, right? These are positive sides. So if I need to find 1.25, it means I'm going to find 1.2 on this side, and I'm going to find the last digit at the top. So let's go and find 1.2. Let's make it bigger. 1.2 is there, and I go to the top. I look for 0 0.05 because I'm looking for the last digit at the, at the top of the table. That is why you always have to leave your answer to two decimal. So where they both meet, that is the probability that I am looking for, right? That's the probability of a less than. So the probability that Z is less than 1.25 will be equals to 0 0.8944. That's easy, right? Let's then go to the negative side. Let's change this. Let's change this. Let's say we want to look for the probability. Let's say I want to find the probability that Z is less than minus 3.18. Let's say, or I didn't say, 3.18. So 3.1 minus 3.1, I'm going to find it here, and 0 0.08, I'm going to find it at the end because eight is what i'm looking for so at the top the last digit eight on the side 3.1 minus 3.1 where they both meet that is the probability that i'm looking for and therefore the probability is 0 0.0074 how many zeros there are three. Now, you need to also pay attention to the table that you are using. My table has four decimals, but if you start from 3.1, there are five decimals. 
or not even from three point three from three from minus three there are three decimals um but yeah using this table that you have you should be able to answer any question that are asked so that is how we're going to find the probabilities easy any questions is it clear are you happy will you be able to use it okay now i'm not even sure whether i should i need to do some exercise like this but let's look at this exercise let x represent the time it takes in seconds to download an image from the internet suppose x is normally distributed with the mean of 18 seconds and the standard deviation of five seconds find the probability that x is less than 18.6 so we know that it's less than therefore it means the probability of z a we're going to be finding it on the table there's nothing we need to do we're just going to go to the table and find the probability after we have standardized this x value so standardizing the x value it means we're moving from this x distribution value we're going to apply the z distribution formula where we calculate our x is 18.6 the mean they told us the mean of 18 standard deviation which is our sigma of five seconds substitute we get the z score of 0 0.12 and therefore we can go and standardize it by going to the table right so now we have our z of 0 0.12 and 2 0 0.12 to go back to there and it is positive right so we go to the positive side of the table just when i delete this and we are on the positive side we're looking for 0 comma 1 remember 0 comma 1 2 0 comma 1 and 2 at the end and they is where they are 0 comma 1 on this and 2 at the top and that is 0 comma 5478 so we standardized the mean to be 0 the standard deviation of 5 to be 1 and we standardized our x to be a z from 18 to be 0 comma 1 2 and we went and we found the probability and the probability is 0 comma 578 now this tells me that 50 so we can multiply this by 100 and get 55 percent of the data is below 0 0.12 or is below 18. 55% because the probability is in decimal, it's a proportion. And if we want to find the percentage, we just multiply the probability by 100 to get the percentage. So 55% of the data is less than 18.6, lies below 18.6. That's how you use the probabilities. Now, how do we then, if I know how to find the probability of the less than, then how do I find the probability of the greater than? So finding the probability of a greater than, it means since the table contains only the less than and the less than are complement of your greater than. So you can see that the white area, this white area is your complement area, right? Complete complement this is your complement area and what do we know about complement so remember the probability of a complement can be found by one minus the probability of a or the probability of a can be found we can find the probability of a by finding one minus the probability of an a complement so if this we know that this area is the probability of a less than a 
then we can find the probability of a greater than a because less than a is a complement of greater than a. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is that if I need to find the probability of Z greater than A, is the same as finding one minus, one minus the probability of Z less than A. So what it means, it means that if I need to find the probability of a greater than, I will go and calculate my Z score, which is X minus the mean divide by the standard deviation and use the answer I get to go to the table. But the value I find on the table, I need to subtract it from one. So let's look at an example. Now find the probability that X is greater than 18.6. This is similar to what we just did. Remember the mean of 18, the standard deviation of five, we were doing an example with less than 18.6. Now we're doing it with greater than. We just swap the, 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 the sign. So I'm not going to go and calculate again because our Z of mean divided by uh, X minus the mean divided by this, we found that it was 0, 0.12, right? We did find that. So now if we need to go find the probability of Z greater than, 0 0.12, we're going to say one minus the value we find on the table. And we know when we went to the table, we found the value on the table as 0 0.5478. Similar, remember, I told you that the area underneath the curve, the whole area, the shaded area will be equals to and one. We did find this blue area earlier on, Remember, when we were doing this exercise, we did find that it was 0, 0.5478. Now, if we know what that is, then we can say 1 minus the complement, and it will give us this probability that we are looking for, which is 0, 0.54, uh, 4522. That is the probability of Z of X greater than a value. I hope it makes sense. Okay, we're going to do some exercises and then you it will become clearer as well. Okay. Now, how do we then find the probability of between? Finding the probability of between, it's a little bit different to what we just did now. So remember, when is the probability of Z less than A? That will be the value on the table. When is the probability of Z greater than A? That will be one minus the value we find on the table. Now, with the probability of between, because it's this probability of that we're looking for, this area in between, we need to subtract those two areas or we need to do something. So since we don't know what this less than is and we don't know what this greater than is, but we can on the table find this value and we can find that value. We can find both of them and subtract this value from that value uh, or subtract this value from this value so that we can get the missing part. So let's do that. How do we do this? So when we find the probability of between, we're going to find the probability of Z less than or equals to B. OK, that's the other thing. I don't even have to use the equal sign. When we deal with normal distribution, you don't have to worry about whether it, there is an equal or less uh, equal sign or no equal sign to it. So they mean one and the same thing. Only, only for normal distribution, the equal and the not equal and the less than or the greater than they mean one and the same thing here. So you're going to find the probability of Z less than B, which is the second one. You're going to also find the probability of Z less than A, which is the first part and subtract one from the other. So we're going to find the probability of Z less than B. 
minus the probability of Z less than A, because those are the values that we can find on the table. How do we then do that? So, suppose X is normal, is normal with the mean of 18.0 and standard deviation of 5.0, find the probability that x lies between 18 and 18.6. So we go and find the, we calculate the z distribution for 18. So we go and do that one and we go and do that one. So for 18, it's 18 minus 18 because our mean is 18 and our standard deviation is 5. 18 minus 18 is 0. So therefore it means the answer there will be 0 because any number divided by, or 0 divided by any number will just be 0. So for 18.6 minus 18 divided by 5 gives us 0, 0,12. Remember, we have now the probability that the Z lies between those two values. So we can go and say, we go into the table to find the probability that Z is less than 0, 0.12 minus the probability that Z is less than zero. Now with zero, you can just put zero, zero at the end. And then we go to the table. And on the table, I'm lazy to navigate between the two. On the table, we're going to first find the probability that Z, uh, this is what I just wrote on the other slide, Z of less than 0, 0,12. So 0, 0,1 and 0, 0, 0,02 at the top where they meet is 0, 0,5478. We write it down minus the probability of Z of 0, 0,00. So if I go to 0, 0,0 and 0, 0,00 at the top, it will be 0, 0,05. And that will be 0, 0,5, 0, 0,5478 minus 0, 0,5. 0, 0, 0, it gives us the probability of the between is 0, 0,0478. That is just the shaded area that we are looking for. Okay. Another example of between, if I need to find the probability that X lies between 17.4 and 18. Uh, and this time you can see that we're looking for this blue shaded area. The last time we were looking for the red shaded area. Now we chopped, we're looking for this site. And we go and calculate the 17. So you go into Z of 17.4 minus 18 divided by five and the answer will be minus 0, 0,12. And then you go and calculate the value of Z of 18. It's 18 minus 18 divided by five, which is 0, 0,00. Now, you're gonna go to the table. Before we go to the table, because then I have my 0, 0,012 and zero. So we need to take the second which is the probability of a Z of less than zero minus the first, which is minus the probability of Z less than minus 0 0.12. So now I'm gonna go to the table just for this. So we know we go into the positive side of the table to look for 0, 0.00. And zero, remember it's zero comma zero zero. So the zero zero and this and the last digit of zero there. And we can see that that is zero comma five. And the other one was minus zero comma one two. So we go into the negative side, which is the top table. And we're going to look for negative zero comma one. And at the top, we're looking for two. Where is two is the last column. So I'm just going to highlight the last, this third column, sorry, the third column. And that is 0, 0,5, uh, 0, 0,4522. And that is 0, 
4522 and we subtract that from 0, 0,5. And the answer we get is 0, 0,0478. And that is the probability of big tree. Okay. I'm left with two minutes to conclude my recapping. Uh, just to recap on the empirical rule, because we're just going to use it just now as well. We can say that about the distribution of the value around the mean, for any normal distribution that it can be, um, the values will fall 68% of the values will fall within one standard deviation. Remember that, which is the mean plus or minus, because the minus will be in this side of the mean and the plus will be on the other side of the mean. So it will be one standard deviation on the left or on the right of the mean. And if it is two standard deviation, we say it is 95%. And when, oh, I said 98, so it's 99.7. How I, I was short of 1%. Uh, it's 99.7 for a three standard deviation away from the mean. So sometimes, let's assume that you are not, or you are given the probability or the area underneath the curve, and they tell you that the area underneath the curve, which is the, the probability, is 99%. But we don't know what your x value is. So in order for you to be able to calculate that x value, you need to use the empirical rule, because then if you look at the empirical rule, you have the mean, you have the standard deviation, and all just what is missing is just finding the z value, which is you're going to replace that three with the z value but that is just for the empirical rule so if we look at the probability questions that we have right now if we need to find x and we are not given x but we are given the probability or we are given the z value we are able, we can be able to find any of the value whether it's the mean the population mean or the standard deviation you should be able to Remember, if your formula is z is equal to x minus the population mean divided by. So if I'm if I need to find x, I will just leave x on its own, multiply your standard deviation with your z, and take the mean to the other side, and that will be a positive mean. So then you can see that this is the same. So if we need to find the X value for an unknown or for a known probability, let's say they gave us the probability but not the Z score for the known probability, we first need to find the Z value and then we can go and find our X value. So let's look at this. Let X represent the time it takes in seconds to download an image from the internet. X is normal with the mean of 8, so they have given us the mean of 8 and the standard deviation, which is our sigma, the standard deviation of 5. Find X such that 20% of the downloaded times are less than. So it's also very important that they mention weights like this, because then it tells us how are we going to find the Z value on the table. If the, if the answer here, because this says less than, we know that we're just going to go to the table. If it said it is greater than, then we need to know that. The value this they have given us, they found it by doing one minus the table value. This you need to always remember. So because they're telling us it is less than, then we're going to assume that this probability that they have they found it by using the z value and that's how they got to 20 percent so we are going to do the same because we need to use x is equals to the mean plus your z times the standard deviation we are given the mean which is eight we are given we are are not given the z value, but we are given the probability. So it means we're going to need to find the z value. 
we are given the standard deviation, which is which is five. So how do we find this 20%? So we know that they told us that it's less than, so it means it's this shaded area, which is less than. So since it is less than, then it means we need to go to the table. Inside the probability table, we need to go find zero. Let's go back. 20% divided by 100 is 0 0.20 right and if i need to convert it i can make it to four decimal because the table is four decimal so it means i'm gonna go inside the table to look for 0 0,2 inside this table don't go to the positive you see in the positive then values are bigger so we're gonna go to the negative side table to look for a 0 0.2 so if i go in there i have 0. 0, 0, 0.2, 0, 0.29. So I must go back, 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 back. 0, 0.250. 0. I'm going to take that one. So when I get there, I need to read my Z value. So I'm going to read Z is 0, 0, minus 0, 0,8. So let me write it down. 8 plus minus 0, 0,8. That's not the end. I must go up, 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 up to look for the last digit. Don't forget about the last digit. And the last digit is four. Times, times five. And then you solve this, that will give you your X. So that's what I did. So you go, Inside the table, you look for the value that is close to 0, 0,20, which is 0, 0,2005 on the table. You go out and you go out to look for the last digit, the first two digits and the last digit. So 20% of the area in the lower tail is consistent with the Z value of minus 0, 0,84. So I do have my Z. Now I can just go and substitute and calculate and find that my X value is 3.8. So 20% of the values from the distribution of the mean of 8 and the standard deviation of 5 are less than 3.8. And that's how you use the normal distribution to find your answers. What you have learned in the last hour, the basic concepts of normal distribution. You've learned how to compute probabilities from a normal distribution, finding the probability of a less than, finding the probability of a greater than, and finding the probability of between. Remember, the probability of a less than is the value you find on the table. The probability of a greater than is one minus the value you find on the table. The probability of between will be finding the value on the table of the second value minus the value on the table of the first value. But don't forget that before you find the value on the table, you need to standardize your values by using the Z value. And remember that this whole formula is equivalent to A. A value. Okay. And we've learned how to find the probabilities using the formula and using the table. And that concludes today's session. So in the next 30 minutes or less, let's look at some questions or exercises. And I will leave some more exercises for you in the handout so that you can do it and we can have a conversation on WhatsApp or on my UNISA as well. Okay, so the first question is that STA 1610 final mark shows a normal distribution with the mean of 56 and the standard deviation of 4%. So they have given us the mean and sigma our standard deviation. What is the probability that a random chosen student fails 
a module. So if it if the student is failing the module, then it means they got less than less than 50, right? Because if you get less than 50, you fail the module. So it means we need to find the probability that X is less than 50. So X is less than 50 will be given by the probability because we need to find Z of X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation and substitute the values which is our x this is what is given in the question which is 50 minus our mean 56 because i'm working with percentages my bad my bad what i need to do is convert this to decimals so this will be 0 0.5 and this will be 0, 0,5 and 0, 0,5 and 0, 0,56. Divide by standard deviation is 0, 0,04. Okay. The probability that Z is less than, let's do the calculation. Open my normal calculator from um, here yeah, because this is just a simple. So there is nothing wrong with using a normal calculator. 0. 0.5 minus 0. 0.56 equals divide by 0. 0.04 equals minus 1.50. Minus 1.50. Now you need to go to the table. Go into the table. Go into the negative side of the table. We're looking for minus 1.5. Minus 1.5, and at the top is 0, so it's on the first column. So that is 0, 0,0068, I think. And the answer is 0, 0,0668. Are there any questions? Any questions, any clarity, any comment? Uh, uh, so I just, no, I just uh, what's to ask? Uh, I've come, so I've come across this, uh, it appears all tables that you can get of a standard normal cumulative distribution function. They go from negative 3.4 to positive 3.4. And then the preferred one we should have it goes to four decimal units. Uh, is that correct? Uh, sure. Is it also called a cumulative standardized normal distribution? If the name is the same and the uh, table has positive and negative, value, like a table with the positive Z values, and negative z values does it show it like that if so then that is the table that you can use as long as yeah the, uh, the table i have uh it starts off with the negative values it goes all the way till it gets to uh, uh, the, the the it goes descends to the negative values until it gets to negative 0, 0.0 and then it goes to positive 0, 0.0 till 3.4 yeah it should it should work 
Um, if you say it ends on 3.4, therefore it means you are missing all these other values. And if it also starts at 3 on this side, therefore it means you are missing those other values. So you just need to pay a, um, to be very careful in, in cases where your lecturer asks you a question and the answer is negative 3.7, right? Mm -hmm. So if the answer is negative 3.78 or 3.77 or 3. Point, and your table does not have all those values, you just need to make sure that you have the one that has all the values. So at least up to negative 6. Z value should be enough. Even if it continues, it should also continue to up to six, positive six. Sorry, guys. I just checked. So the book that we have, Introduction to Statistics, um, it's the one that they delivered to us. It goes from minus 3.0 to positive 3.0. So it's messing because, everything yeah. above here. Yeah. In the study guide, right? Yes, you yeah. About the study guide. Do you yeah. have a Page numbers in your um, page number 120 and 121. 120 and 121. So go yeah. to your study guide, guys. You will find this table, and this table is very important. Like I told you, from now on, until we do um, hypothesis testing, all the ch study units that we're going to be doing now on what they use these tables. So next week, we're going to use the same table. The following week, we're going to use the same table. Okay. And next month, we're going to be using the same table. Okay, so. Okay, now let's look at number two, exercise two. So the other thing that you also need to pay attention to, remember we've been talking about standard deviation, the mean and the standard deviation. So this question says, the owner of an appliance store uses a normal distribution with the mean of 10 and the variance, we know what the variance is, sigma squared of 9, to model the weekly net sales. Calculate the probability that x is less than 3.5. And they it's a less than, then it means it's easier. So because they gave you the variance here, what do we need to do? What must we do? Uh, if we're given the variance, we must square root of 2 obtain the standard deviation. So we're going to find the square root of 9, which is 3, which will give us the standard deviation. So now let's go find the probability that x is less than 3.5, which is the probability that z is less than x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, which will find the probability substituting into the equation 3.5 minus the mean of 10, the standard deviation of 3. We did find it that it's 3. Probability z less than what is 3.5 minus 10 divide by 3 it's minus 2.1766666666 so which we can write it as minus 2.17 so we're gonna go to their table to go find on the negative side of the table you know, let's delete the old things. Minus, I forgot now. What are we looking for? Minus 2.17, right? 
minus 2.17 minus 2.1 and 27 is right here i'm just going to highlight it where they both meet it's 0 0.015 0 0.015 0 0.0150, which is option number five. Okay, easy, right? I'm not gonna, oh, let's, let's just answer it, it's fine. I was gonna say, I'm not gonna answer this, but I see that it's very different. Um, so this one, it says if the z score given is minus 1.96, the distribution of x is normally distributed with the mean of 40 and the standard deviation of 5, then what is the value of x? So we can do it by just using the formula. Oh. So, if you already remember how to convert this, you can already automatically say the mean plus or minus z of the standard deviation. They will give you one and the same thing. So we know what our z is. It's minus 1.96. Our x is what we need to find because that's what we need to find. Our mean, we were told that it's 40. Our standard deviation is 5, and we can just multiply minus 1.96 times 5, x minus 40, and minus 1.96 times 5 is minus. 9.8 and I move 40 to the side it will be plus 40 is equals to x and therefore minus 9.8 plus 40 gives us 30.2 which is x so x is equal to 30.2 or you can come in this side and say the mean of 40 plus I don't know why I have plus or minus. We just need the plus, not plus or minus. Plus. Um, plus the standard uh, minus 1.96 times the standard deviation. The answer here will be 30.2. Should be the one and the same thing. And that will be answer number one. Right? Okay. Since um, I just showed you, um, if you're given the mean, the standard deviation, easy, you first need to find, you calculate your Z. Sometimes, you are not given the mean, the standard deviation, you are given already the Z value and they want you to evaluate each statement. Like for example, all these statements need you to evaluate them to choose which one is incorrect. So you don't have to go and calculate your Z of this and that and no, already your Z of x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation has been calculated, which is your a value, which is 2.64, which is minus 0 0.8, all that. All you need to do is use the value that you are given, go to the table, find the answer. Now, always remember the probability of z less than a a is the value we're going to find on the table. Probability of z greater than a, that will be 1 minus the value we find on the table. The probability of z lying between two values. Will be the probability of z less than b 
minus the probability of z less than a, which is the table value for b minus the table value for a. Okay, so now in the next seven minutes, let's see if we can answer all these questions. I hope you have your tables ready. You are, go I'm not going to navigate. You are going to give me the answers. And uh, like you're going to call out the value on the table. So if I get two values that are different, then I, I can just go back and check. So we're also going to pay attention to the sign. So the first one says this should be the probability of Z greater than 2.6 should be that. So let's see if that is true. We know that this we're going to find it by using one might the value we find on the table, which is the probability of Z less than 2.6. So go on to the table and find 2.64 and tell me what is the answer. It's 0 0.9959. Yeah. 0 0.9959. Subtract one from the other, one from 0, oh, sorry, 1 minus 0 0.9959. What do we get? The uh, calculator gives uh, gives uh, three point one to the power of ten. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Ten to the power of negative three. Yeah. So I that would be converted. Yes. yes. So say plus one and equal. And remember that you've added one to the an to the answer. It should be one comma some number now properly, you are able to read it. What do, you, what do you see? And when you read it, so you will have one comma, zero, zero, and some number. But when you read it, remember that you've added one, you just start with zero. Your calculator is giving you? Uh, my calculator is giving me 0 0.041 which is number one. So your answer on your calculator, your scientific calculator gives, gives it to you in an exponential format because if it's a, if there are so many numbers, zeros, then it will make it to the negative 0, 0, the negative three or something like that. So therefore it tells you that there are three zeros, one before and two after the comma. If it's four, it will mean one cop one zero before the comma and three after the comma some things like that it's just an a scientific notation of your calculator if you get answers like that where it gives you to the ex exp that you just add one say plus one but always remember that you've added one start the reading from zero by removing the one okay so now you know Okay, so number one is correct, right? Then let's go to number two. Number two says we need to find the probability that Z is less than negative 0 0.87. So we know that when it's less than the value we see on the table. So on the table, go and find minus 0 0.87 and tell me if it equals to 0 0.1922. Yes, it does. That's correct. Now we have the probability of between. So you're going to find the probability of Z less than 1.40 minus the probability of Z less than minus 1.40. So go to the table and find first the probability of 1 minus uh, 1.4 and give me the, the that probability 0 0.9192 and then go to the negative side and find minus 1.40 and give me the probability 0 0.080 
zero eight. <laughs> yeah, so zero eight zero eight at the back. Yeah, like that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Subtract and tell me if it's equals to that. Or give me the correct answer. Point nine one nine two minus point zero eight zero eight. 0 0.8384. 0 0.8384. So it means this is correct. Okay. Now we have the probability of Z less than 2.8. So it is less than the value you find on the table. That will be the value we're looking for. So, right. Go to the table. Find the probability of minus 2.80 you can just add a zero at the end uh, tell me if it's the same zero minus zero. minus 2.80 yeah it's 0 0.0026 is Sorry. I'm just confirming. Okay, so we're looking for minus 2.80. Minus 2.80. That is that. So it's 0 0.0026. So 0 0.0026. Six because we're looking for minus 2.80. All right. We're looking for the incorrect one. So that will be the incorrect one. So but let's see this one. This is a very interesting one. It says the probability of Z greater than 0 0.74 is the same as the probability of Z less than negative 0. 7, 4. So we need to go and find. Let's go and find this probability first. So here we're going to say 1 minus the probability of Z less than 0 0.74. So go and find this probability of Z 0, 0.74. It's on the positive side and we're looking for 0, 0.74 which is 7704 0.1 minus 0 0.7704 that's what we got but that's not the end so we need to subtract it from 1 1 minus 0 0.7704 which is equals to 0 0.22 nine six so that is the site let's go and verify this site let's go and find the probability of zero minus zero point seven four go into the it's negative zero side point zero point seven four there is four at the top on this column It's twenty two ninety six zero point two two nine six zero point two two nine six. So they are the same. So that is correct. And that's how you will validate, not just by looking at this and say, oh, they are not the same. They should say this and you will find it that you might be wrong. Um, so the probability of Z greater than zero point 74 is the same as 1 minus the probability of Z less than 0 0.74, but it's also the same as the probability of Z less than minus 0 0.74 because they are both equals to 0 0.2296. Okay, so that is the end of our session for today. You can go through this exercise. So this first exercise is looking at that we didn't cover. They say the area 
under the curve is equals to, so you must pay attention because here yeah, they gave you between. And these are Z values. These are already Z values, so it's a Z value of between, so you just calculate it like normal. So you're going to find the probability that Z lies between 0 and 1.25 and apply the same rule that we have when it is between, it say the second one minus the table value of the second one minus the table value of the first one. Okay, and exercise six, it, they gave you the probability. You need to go find the value of A, which is your X value, but then it means you need to go find the Z value and calculate your X equals to the mean plus Z alpha, or you can use your Z X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. This is the probability of Z of A is equals to 0, 0,1515. So it means you need to go and find on the table here inside this table 0, 0,1515 somewhere inside here and then go find the Z values and substitute because it's less than it's easy. The less than is easy. It means the value you find on the table is the value you are looking for. But pay attention, you are given the variance as well. This is straightforward. It says at most, at most we know that it's less than or equal. So you are asked to find the probability of A less than. This is similar to what we just went through. Uh, I think it's even the same question. Mm, it is nothing is has changed on this one. Sorry, my bad. OK, the other questions. Uh, yeah, also they are asking you to find the value to the right. Remember, if you don't know where the right is, just draw yourself a diagram and say the right is on the positive side. So if they told you about the right, therefore it means it is the greater than, therefore the value you're going to be finding is from one minus the probability of Z less than a value. So this probability that you found, because this is the probabilities, this area underneath the curve on the right, it was found by using this. So in order for you to find the correct Z value, you need to take, you cannot take this and go find the Z value. So you need to take the answer that you get from, so this will be one minus 0 0.20661. And once you have that, that will give you the answer of the Z value that you are looking for. And that will be the answer that you are looking for. So I'm just giving you hints as well as I go along. And that concludes today's session. Are there any questions? We are seven minutes over time. Are there any questions, comments? If none, then thank you for coming through and being part of today's session. Unfortunately, I cannot even click anywhere on this thing. I cannot stop the recording. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> are, you are you? Are you able to hear me? What yes. do you see on the screen? Just the names and stuff. Yeah, the names. Are you able to see the names? I'm unable to click anywhere. Okay, I don't know why. I'm not doing the same earlier. I couldn't switch on the mic or anything, but it's working now. All right, I hope the. Oh, 
That's so weird. I am unable to click anywhere to stop the recording or even not even the recording. Uh, to stop sharing. Now we see your video. Yeah. We see, see you. Now you are seeing me. Yeah. Yes. Now I've switched it off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. If there are no questions or comments, uh, then okay. enjoy the rest of your evening. Cool. Thanks, you too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Hey, how do I stop this now? <laughs>